Breaking news, grisly find. A body discovered in the search for a much-loved mum missing from Sydney's northwest. A man assisting police with inquiries. We'll have more ahead. Also breaking now, the World Health Organisation declares monkeypox a global emergency. The decision dividing experts. Happening now, stranded. A cruise ship with 2,000 passengers fighting huge swell and COVID off the Queensland coast. The battle to bring it ashore. Footy legends lost. AFL Morn's Billy Picken and Con Britt both passing away overnight. Tributes to two of the Magpie's best. Off-duty hero, the teenage Melbourne surf lifesaver who dove into the bay to save a kite surfer in strife. She relives the rescue live. We're going to need a bigger boat. The emerging phenomenon of mega sharks growing up to 20 feet, the new monsters of the seas. Plus that loving feeling inside the romance that set the swimming world on fire. Cody Simpson reveals how he wooed Emma McKeon. And the end of the road for Ramsey Street. Behind the scenes for Neighbours final episodes and Margot Robbie's role revealed. Today, Sunday the 24th of July, 2022. Yeah, good morning everyone. Welcome to Weekend Today. Great to be with you this Sunday morning. Michael Genovese is with us again. Uh, but first we have uh, some breaking news. So what's happening, Jane? Yeah, look, this is um, pretty awful, Belinda. Horrific news unfolding right now in Sydney. There are major fears that a house fire in Hinchinbrook in the city's southwest has turned deadly. These details are only just coming into our newsroom now. But as we go to air, we know that fire crews are right now trying to contain the blaze. Multiple people, including a child and a firefighter, have been injured. We will be crossing to our reporter very soon to get the very latest on that story. But in other breaking news this morning, a body has been found in the search for a woman missing for days in Sydney's northwest. Police made the discovery while searching through bushland in Dural last night. It's believed to be that of 43-year-old mum Shireen Kumar, who disappeared from her home on Wednesday night. A 37-year-old man has been taken to Hornsby Police Station and is being questioned. Also breaking, the World Health Organisation has this morning elevated the level of concern over monkeypox. For all of these reasons, I have decided that the global monkeypox outbreak represents a public health emergency of international concern. For more, let's go to US correspondent Alison Petrowski. Ali, what does this declaration mean? Good morning to you, Jenna. Well, this is the highest alarm that the World Health Organization can sound. The last time that they did it, Jenna, was back in 2020 with COVID-19. Now, this declaration doesn't mean that this disease is more transmissible or more severe. It just is really, I guess, a call to arms. A global response uh, is needed for the outbreak. 16,500 cases around the world so far. Monkeypox is in 75 countries. Europe is the hardest hit. Uh, 2,800 plus cases here in the United States and 44 cases in Australia, including 22 in New South Wales and 15 in Victoria. Let's hear from the Director General of the World Health Organization. We have an outbreak that has spread around the world rapidly through new modes of transmission about which we understand too little. Look, monkeypox is the less severe cousin of smallpox. For the moment, Jenna, it is uh, really just affecting men in the LGBTIQ community. However, in the last 24 hours, we have seen two cases in children here in the United States. Ali Petrowski, live in Washington. Thank you. To Queensland now, with thousands on board the Coral Princess are hoping they'll finally be able to dock today with rough seas easing. Live to Lily Greer, who's in Brisbane. Lee, it's an anxious wait for those on board. Yeah, that's right, Belinda, and it would be. They've spent an unexpected extra two days on board this ship. What we know this morning is that a decision will be made on whether the Coral Princess can come here to dock in Brisbane. Authorities will be assessing whether conditions have eased enough to do so, and the conditions here over the last couple of days have been wild. We know there's been a six-metre swell off the coast. Now, these passengers were supposed to hop off the ship on Friday, but conditions were far too rough to do so. They've essentially been confined inside, and it is not hard to see why. You can see in videos coming from passengers on the ship that the wind is blowing outside 
outside. Water is sloshing out of these pools. It is certainly not the stuff that a relaxing cruising holiday is made of. So these passengers will be quite hopeful they'll be able to get off this morning. And being here at the port at the International Cruise Terminal this morning, you can tell conditions of ease. It is a little bit windy, but nothing like what we've seen over the last couple of days. Belinda, as for other waters off our coastline, we know this morning a hazardous surf warning is in place for waters off the Fraser Island coast, the Gold and Sunshine coasts. Yeah, just looking at that vision is bad enough. Thanks, Lily. <laughs> Thousands of people. We need more ambitious emissions reduction, but uh, I would say as a community independent, my approach is possibly more collaborative about working with government. We know in this first week of parliament, we're going to have legislation around our long-term emissions reduction targets, and that does need to uh, apply to how we are going to spend money and plan ahead um, over the next 10 to 20 years. So. I have some agreement with where the Greens are going, but look, I don't always agree with their tactics and uh, maybe the speed of their ambition. Mm. So you need to walk the walk and talk the talk. Angus, the coalition is promising to vote against the 43% emissions reduction target, but Labor is really going to have to battle, have a battle on its hands. It's going to need support of the 12 Greens in the Senate plus one more vote. Yeah, that's right, Belinda. Um, the Greens are living in fantasy land. Look, we're seeing record levels of renewables coming into our grid, the highest level of household solar in the world in Australia, and it needs backup, it needs dispatchable generation to complement it. Um, that's why projects like the gas projects they're opposed to are so important. They're not just important for Australia, they're important for the world. You only have to look at the challenges in the energy systems that are being seen in Europe and Asia to understand what happens when these projects don't proceed. So they are living in a fantasy land. They will drive up the cost of living for Australians and for people around the world. Uh, and it's crucial we get these projects to proceed. Yeah, we'll see what happens this week. The first session of new parliament. It's been a long time coming. Uh, a new report has revealed 80% of mums and dads feel they're missing in action on the parenting front as they juggle work and cost of living pressures. Zali and Angus, uh, you're both parents uh, and you have to you know, do a lot of hours with your work. Do you feel that, you know, the pressure to be more hands-on at home, Zali? Uh, look, I'm incredibly lucky. I've got a fantastic husband and partner who very much uh, picks up what I have had to drop off with uh, coming into politics. But it is an incredible struggle. Uh, and I think this is where our laws and our, our system hasn't progressed and kept kept in, in line with families that are juggling, they are coping with a lot with cost of living. We need to improve parental leave and cost of childcare. It's a massive aspect for both parents to be able to participate in the workforce. Remember, women are still uh, 14 paid, you know, on average, the pay gap is 14% less for women still to men. So we have a lot of things we need to catch up with. But the biggest thing is, you know, parent guilt is always such a, a hard one. Uh, you want to be everywhere at once. And after the last two years of lockdown where there was homeschooling and working from home, um, everyone is probably a little tired of, of juggling everything. Yeah, trying to keep all those balls up in the air. Yes. We're <laughs> bound to drop them at some point, aren't we? Uh, what about you, Angus? I'm sure you've got a, a great supportive partner as well. I sure do. My wife plays a, an enormously important role, as does Zali's, Zali's husband. and, and uh, you know, I'm incredibly appreciative of this, but I'm also very sympathetic to how parents feel in that survey. I think we all feel like that uh, from time to time, if not more often. And I don't think we should overdo the guilt thing. I think it's very hard. Uh, kids of this generation are actually getting more support than has ever been the case in the past. So we shouldn't overdo the guilt. But look, cost of living is a big deal. Uh, it does need Con continual addressing from the, from the government. Um, Jim Chalmers has a statement he's making later this week and we're looking forward to hearing him talk about cost of living and alleviating those pressures. All right, we have to leave it there, I'm sorry to say. Thanks for your time this morning. Thanks. It is 8 a.m. today's top stories. Breaking now, house fire horror. Two confirmed dead in Sydney southwest. A child rushed to hospital. We'll have more ahead. Also breaking, the World Health Organisation declares monkeypox a global emergency. The decision dividing experts. Happening now, stranded. A cruise ship with 2,000 passengers fighting huge swell and COVID off the Queensland coast. The battle to bring it ashore. Footy legends lost. AFL mourns Billy Pickin and Con Britt, both passing away overnight. Tributes to two of the Magpies' best. 
Off-duty hero, the teenage Melbourne surf lifesaver who dove into the bay to save a kite surfer in strife. She relives the rescue live. We're going to need a bigger boat. The emerging phenomenon of mega sharks what? growing up to six metres, <laughs> the new monsters of the sea. Plus that loving feeling inside the romance that set the swimming world on fire. Cody Simpson reveals how he wooed Emma McKeon. And the end of the road for Ramsey Street, behind the scenes for Neighbours final episodes and Margot Robbie's role revealed. Today, Sunday the 24th of July, 2022. Yeah, real end of an era. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Weekend Today on this Sunday morning. Jenna is in for Charles again, uh, but we are following some disturbing breaking news, Jane. Yeah, we certainly are, Belinda. Uh, a house fire in Sydney southwest has now turned deadly, with two people killed and a child seriously injured. Our reporter Ruth Wynne Williams is at the scene in Hinchinbrook. Good morning to you, Ruth. Um, what more do we know about this? Good morning, Jane. Firefighters are still responding to what is a very serious and sad situation in our city's southwest this morning. Uh, two people have been killed in this house fire after being pulled from their home uh, shortly before six o'clock this morning. It's understood up to six people were inside when this fire broke out. Among them, a 10-year-old child. Uh, that child was treated here at the scene and is now uh, being treated for very serious injuries at Westmead's Children's Hospital. Uh, two firefighters are also among those injured. You can just see this home uh, is still smouldering and firefighters are right now working from above, pouring water down into that uh, very hot structure before they can make their way inside. Uh, the cause of this blaze at this stage, Jane, it is unknown. It is a very cold out here in Sydney's west this morning. It has been for the past few weeks and our city's officials have been warning about the dangers of using fires to heat people's homes, especially over the past few days. As I said, though, the cause of this blaze right now is still unknown. That investigation could take some time uh, and for the rest of the day at least this street uh, will be cordoned off as police now join firefighters uh, in investigating this blaze. Thanks Ruth and our thoughts this morning with everybody involved in that tragedy. Also breaking now, a man has been charged with murder after the body of a woman was found in bushland in Sydney's northwest. The body is yet to be formally identified, but it is believed to be that of missing mum, Shireen Kumar, who disappeared from her dural home on Wednesday night. The 37-year-old man will appear in court today. More breaking news on this busy Sunday morning. The World Health Organisation has issued its highest alarm as monkeypox cases rise across the globe. For all of these reasons, I have decided that the global monkeypox outbreak represents a public health emergency of international concern. For more on this, let's go to US correspondent Alison Petrowski. Ali, we last saw this declaration used for COVID. Yeah, that's right. The year was 2020, Jenna, and I think this feels all too familiar. As you mentioned, this is the highest alarm that the World Health Organization can sound. It doesn't mean that this disease is more transmissible or more severe than they thought. It is really more a call to action for a global coordinated response to monkeypox, which is now in 75 countries, more than 16,500 cases worldwide. Europe is the hardest hit. Uh, more than 2,800 cases here in the United States and 41 cases in Australia, in including 22 in New South Wales and 15 in Victoria. Let's hear from the Director General of the World Health Organization. We have an outbreak that has spread around the world rapidly through new modes of transmission about which we understand too little. Monkeypox is really the less severe cousin of smallpox. For the moment, it appears to be impacting men in the LGBTQI community. However, in the last two days, Jenna, we have seen cases of the uh, disease in children here in the United States. Concerning stuff. Ali, thanks for the report. Easing weather conditions in Queensland could mean thousands of stranded passengers on board the Coral Princess may finally step foot on dry land. Live to Lily Greer, who's in Brisbane for us this morning. Lily, how likely is it that this vessel will dock today? 
Well, Belinda, the latest from the Coral Princess helpline is that they're not exactly sure when passengers will be able to disembark this ship, but they are hopeful and they are expecting that it will be today. And passengers are very keen to do that. What we know is that they were supposed to hop off here on Friday, but that couldn't happen. The weather was simply too wild. There was a six metre swell in waters off of Brisbane and they couldn't get a pilot out to the boat. And that is vital in helping the ship navigate the waters of the port. And you can see how wild this weather is based off videos that passengers were posting online. The wind was whipping. Breaking at nine, house fire horror. Two confirmed dead in Sydney's southwest. A child rushed to hospital. Authorities speaking out this hour. The, the fire was so intense that firefighters actually couldn't make it to the front door because of the radiant heat. Happening now, stranded at sea with 2,000 on board. A cruise ship off the Queensland coast battling to come ashore. Footy legends lost. AFL mourns Billy Picken and Con Britz both passing away overnight tributes to two of the Magpies' best. Cold case breakthrough. New developments in the death of John Bonet Ramsey. What could finally solve the murder? Plus, get wiggy with it. Forget expensive styling. The surprise rise in women opting to wear wigs. And Bridget Jones returns. How good inside the secret plans for a fourth film today, Sunday the 24th of July, 2022. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new hour of Weekend Today. Jenna's in for Charles again, but we want to get straight to that breaking news, Jane. Thank you, Belinda. New at 9am, a horror blaze at a home in Sydney's southwest has claimed the lives of two people and landed a child in hospital with serious injuries as authorities work to determine the cause. We'll go live now to Madison Williams, who's in Hinchinbrook for us. Madison, we've just heard from firefighters. We have, Jane, and they've described it as an incredibly intense fire. To tell us more, I'm joined by Superintendent Luke Unsworth here. Okay. Superintendent, this has been an incredibly heroic and difficult rescue to perform. Yes, it has. So firefighters arrived, incredibly intense fire. Firefighters couldn't approach the front door because of the radiant heat which was coming out. They have managed to quickly knock down the fire and make entry up onto the top floor, which is where they thought most people would be sleeping. And they've managed to eventuate three rescues uh, through that process. Unfortunately, two of those people are now deceased. But uh, yes, yeah, significantly intense fire here. We've also seen a couple of firefighter injuries, which is obviously an additional complexity of this particular incident. But certainly the message we'd love to get out today to everyone who's listening is winter is the most dangerous time of the year for you to have a house fire. Uh, so what we need to do is really for you to engage in your home fire safety. Every home should have a working smoke alarm and I'm certainly not saying this premises didn't have a working smoke alarm but for your listeners um, or your viewers everyone needs to have a working smoke alarm on every level where people sleep and obviously we need to watch out for other things like heaters and those other sorts of things but as I said drawing no conclusions about the cause of this fire here today. Today. Uh, we will be investigating with the police and our own, our own investigators for the rest of the day and probably for the next couple of, couple of days. Right. Thank you very much. And as you hear it, this is actually the 12th death uh, fatal house fire this winter. So the message really is to be smart and make sure that you have your fire safety plan. Jane. So sad, Madison. Thank you. Another major story breaking this hour. A man has been charged with murder after the body of a woman was found in bushland in Sydney's northwest. The body is yet to be formally identified, but it is believed to be that of missing mum, Shireen Kumar, who disappeared from her dural home on Wednesday night. A 37-year-old man will front court today. More breaking news and the World Health Organisation has raised its alert for monkeypox as case numbers rise worldwide. For all of these reasons, I have decided that the global monkeypox outbreak represents a public health emergency of international concern. For more, let's go to our US correspondent, Alison Petrowski. Ali, how concerned should we be? Look, I'd say, Jane, alert but not alarmed. This is the highest alert level that the World Health Organization can issue, but that is not because they are seeing lots of deaths. That's not the case at all. And it is also not because we are seeing that this is more transmissible or more severe than we first thought. This is really a call to arms for countries to unite for a coordinated global response against the disease, Jane, which is now in 75 countries, more than 16,500 cases so far. Uh, the cases are at their highest in Europe, but we're climbing towards 3,000 here in the United States where I am. There are 41 cases at the moment in Australia, 22 in New South Wales and 15 in Victoria. Let's hear from the World Health Organisation. 
the risk of monkeypox is moderate globally and in all regions, except in the European region, where we assess the risk is high. Monkeypox is really smallpox's less severe cousin. Those who suffer from it tend to get flu-like symptoms and lesions on their skin. At the moment, Jane, cases seem to be in men in the LGBTQI community. However, in the last 24 hours, we have had two cases uh, here in children here in the United States. Thank you, Ali. Thousands of passengers on board the Coral Princess stuck off the coast of Queensland are hoping they can finally return to dry land today. Rough seas have prevented the cruise ship from being able to dock into the port of Brisbane. Authorities are waiting for conditions to ease before sending a pilot on board to navigate. Meanwhile, a hazardous surf warning is still in place for much of southeast Queensland this morning. Beaches from Fraser Island down to the Gold Coast are being hit with terrible surf and authorities are reminding people to stay out of the water. Thousands in Byron Bay are waking up for the final day of splendour in the grass, but it's been a messy night.